Wow, I've had some good days. Yes, I have. I've had some hills to climb. Have you on this evening? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Bible study. This is the third Wednesday, February 2022. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church, 544 Government Street, Baton Rouge. To our Facebook Live audience, uh, our YouTube audience, welcome to today's worship experience. Oh God, today we're going to continue to talk from the subject, plan your work and work your plan. According to James, the first chapter, verses one through eight. But before we get into the word of God, I'd like to say something about uh, the month that we are celebrating this February 2022. This month, uh, as we celebrate black history, we acknowledge and, and I want you to be with me on this, <coughs> excuse me, on this evening. Um, if there was a trailblazer in your life that really helped you along, uh, I want you to type their names in. Uh, you know, these are the real history makers in your life. The world changers who paved a better way forward for us all. Now we can look back into history and look at those that really helped uh, the nation, but those are some people that really have helped us in our day-to-day -day lives. And if you, you're with me on this evening, go ahead and type their names in. Because they dared not to dream. Many more are living their life of their dreams today because of them. Uh, Dr. Carter uh, Godwin Woodson is credited for having established Black History Month nearly 100 years ago, known as the father of black history. He was um, the, the second African-American to obtain a PhD from Harvard. 50 years later, President uh, Ford became the first U.S. president to officially recognize Black History Month. Yes, yes, I see the names coming. That's good. That's good. Uh, when he called on the public to seize the opportunity to honor the two often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every era of, in, uh, of endeavor throughout our history, those names that you're typing today, they made a way that you can see a brighter tomorrow. They made a way that your day, your today, their spirit is still living within you. You know, as we chart our future, we must understand that the forces that help shape our present is from before us. You know, and if they've gone on to be with the Lord, you know, I say this to you, their work, they can't get their just reward in heaven just yet. Why? Because their work is still being worked by you. For all the African Americans to recall our history is to salute the steadfastness nature of our collective soul. You know, Africa, and I've been to the continent, uh, is more than just a glamorous fact. Uh, uh, Maya Angelou said, it's a historical truth. No man can know where he's going unless he knows exactly where he's been and exactly how he arrived 
at this present place. Now more than ever, we need dreamers. We need innovators. Speak to your children. Let them know. Uh, if you're just joining us, I told our audience to, to type on the screen those history makers uh, that was African-American that have encouraged their lives. And I see the names coming up, but, but I, I want you, even as uh, we talk about this, I want you directly uh, to continue to become, be a dreamer, be an innovator, make history. Uh, it, it, you, it's not that you set out to make history, but if you keep doing the will of God, history will be made because of you. We need those that, that are committed to cultivating their gifts and rising up to their highest potential, not allowing the power of the enemy to keep pushing you down. You, you know, uh, and, and I can, I can imagine what slaves had to go through. At the end of slavery, it, it did not result in unconditional freedom in 1865. Ever since, people of African descent have had to contend with severe disparities uh, in all kind of areas, uh, employment, health, education, voting rights, uh, and the list goes on. But after the Civil War, it would take more than law, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and more than a hundred years to make rights real. And, and, and you know, those that fought for this was brave. They were fearless. Uh, they was courageous. Uh, you know, and, and I just have a question. And I want to ask this question on Sunday also. How do you go from slavery to freedom without a blueprint? I want you to type that with me. How do you go from slavery to freedom without a blueprint? How do you do it? We see, uh, many of us have seen the civil rights activists of the 50s and 60s. And, and, and you know, their legacies live. But there were hundreds of thousands of people that fought for freedom. Millions. Without a blueprint. How do you move a nation? A mindset. Oh God, is this too deep for you on uh, in February on Black History Month for Bible study? We're gonna get into the text, but I I just want to put something on your mind. How do we go from slavery, or how did we go from slavery to freedom without a blueprint? It's the same way God is taking you beyond your imagination. Oh God, this is good. This is good. He, 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 you know, in Louisiana, uh, there was something um, on the civil rights um, trail. Th discover, you know, the real life heroes who strategized and organized and preached and marched and uh, boycotted. They stood up. They sat down and sang uh, for change. Real people who dedicated themselves and the lives to making rights real. We're here now <laughs> to plan our work and work our plan. That's, that's the message for this evening. Uh, continue from Sunday. Plan your work and work your plan. But this is an important question I did ask. How did we go from slavery to freedom? And wherever you grew up, how did you move from there to where you are now? It's God's grace. It's God's grace. Shall we pray? Let's get into God's word. Um, Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Scriptural text is found, uh, James, I won't read all eight verses on this evening, but I, I will uh, read the first three or four. Uh, it, it says, James, a servant of God, James chapter 1. Verses 1 through 8. God's grace. Yes, I like that. Uh, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. They're scattered abroad. Greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. <laughs> I told you, you got <laughs> you to be real spiritual to, to say to count joy when you fall into something. 
Yeah, it's the Bible, verse 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work patience. Verse 4, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any man, woman, lack wisdom, let them ask of God, that give it men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given to them. Let not him, don't ask God for anything, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven uh, with the wind and tossed. For let not that person think that they shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded person, the King James says a double-minded man, is unstable in all of his ways. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oftentimes, um, it takes planning to make great moves in the natural and the spiritual. Uh, plan your work and work your plan. Planning your work is just a strategic planning process that, in that include uh, being uh, clear about your goals and the outcomes so that you can uh, create a plan to achieve them. Then working your plan is the execution process. Thank you, Lord. You see, the Bible says, uh, let us put aside uh, excuses. He, he, he says, if you're double-minded, mm -mm, this is not for you. He says, I want you to be clear on where you're going. And even if you don't know where you're going, he says, I want you to have some faith. And that's what I want to talk about uh, at, toward the end, the middle and the end, wisdom and faith, because you have to have these two. They're married together. So I'm saying to us, put aside excuses and justifications. Instead, rediscover the benefit that God has for you, planning your work and working your plan. In reality, before we buy a car, we should consider the payments. Hello. Therefore, while planning, count the cost. Because, and, and I'm not saying you just need to be thankful for everything because anybody can praise God when they get a new car. Anybody can praise him when they get a new job. Anybody can praise him when everybody loves you. Anyone, uh, you know, can praise God when good things happen, but as believers, can we praise God when all hell is breaking loose? <laughs> oh God, but I want you to know this, that when hell is breaking loose, all hell is breaking loose. Know that you're on your way to a breakthrough. Can somebody type that with me this evening? I'm on my way to a breakthrough. <laughs> my God from Zion, I'm on my way to a breakthrough. It doesn't matter what it looks like. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Oh, God, it, it, it's just my opinion that it takes practice or planning uh, to count something joy when adversity strikes. Adversity often strikes uh, when we are on the verge of something. Oh, God, can somebody type with me? I'm on the verge of something. Uh, oh, God, I'm on the verge of something. Uh, you came to this Bible study because you're on the verge of something. You, 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 you made your way here this evening because you're on the verge of something. Something, something is about to break forth in your life. Uh, I know it's been tough. I know it's been hard. I know some of you have had to cry sometimes. I know you can't see your way clear all the time. I, it, it gets uncomfortable, but you are on the verge of something. Oh, God, not only am I on, on my way to a breakthrough, but I'm on the verge of something. Uh, but, but when you get on the verge of something, uh, some of us are, are, are in between planning and doing. You see, at this level, we, we must put, put it down on paper and create strategies. I invite you to consider that everything in your business life, your personal life, and your spiritual life can now be considered a project because you're on the verge of something. And you, you see, joy, he says, count it all joy. Joy, I told you on Sunday, joy is deeper than being happy. It is abiding in you as you abide in Christ to strengthen us with his peace in times of trouble. 
with his peace in times of trouble. Peace in times of trouble. I hope you can hear that on this evening. Uh, to How can we obtain peace in the times of trouble? One way is that I told you Sunday, don't talk about problems more than you talk about the joys of life. You see, some people I've met, and, and, and they're in the church, They every time I speak to them, it's always negative. It's always problem. Now, I do have people that talk about joys, and I gave you some examples on Sunday, but, but sometimes it's just because a, a behavior. Oh God, yes God. Always talking about the negative. That's a that's a behavior. Uh, you, if I were you, and I talked about the negative all the time, I submit to you. Try to go one day without talking negative. Oh God, can 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 you can you type this with me on this evening? I will go one day without talking negative. I, I don't know who I'm talking to all this evening, but I want you to decree and declare, I will go one day, just one day without talking negative, talking about the negative. You, you see, talking negative about loved ones, talk, uh, it's, you see, this has a, 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 a an effect on us when we talk negative. Because there's already enough hell coming against us where we feel like giving up. Where we feel like we're in despair and, and, and it seemed like God is playing silent night. But I, oh my God, I, I told you that um, I, I remember going through moments like that and I still hear a small uh, voice whispering, saying, trust me, keep the faith, don't give up. This situation will not have the best of you. There's, be there's better coming your way. Uh, the, the, the spirit of God says uh, your best is yet to come. Uh, you're still looking good. You're still going to achieve. You're still going to put your foot on the devil's neck. Uh, you, you, you see, I'm doing this pandemic even. I, I had to realize that God is my, 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 my help in the time of trouble talking to multiple therapists, counseling sessions, but God, can somebody type with me, but God, you see, when you're going through the throughness of life, it's but God, you, you know, I was talking to one of our members, and, and I said that uh, you have to have what's called a nevertheless moment, uh, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, uh, even in adversity, even but God, even in adversity, but God, uh, God works his will in our trouble. Thank you, Lord. God will work his will in your trouble and, and it's there. It's his will that we find true joy because we know that uh, we didn't have anything to do with it <laughs> anyway. You see, God will strengthen. God will comfort. He will provide. He will help us uh, see the other side. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in James 1 and 3, he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience, but the wisdom far above is first of all pure. It is also peace, loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It, it, it's the full mercy and the fruit of good deeds. You see, the Bible says, if any person lacks wisdom, you should ask God. And, and oh God, how do you know you don't you don't have wisdom? Because I've seen some some people, I've seen some people, and I have to say, I, I will say this on this evening. I've seen people that that thought that they had all of the answers but their answers was very foolish. How do you know you lack wisdom? You know that you lack wisdom when God allows you, you to see you're not as great as you thought you were. <laughs> you lack wisdom when, when you thought that your way was the best way without trying God's way. <laughs> you thought, uh, who, who, are, who, who, are, who am I speaking to? We know people that lack wisdom, but they think they have it all together. The Bible says we should ask God who gives generously uh, to, to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. This means that even if you are an imperfect, which we all are, he will give 
us wisdom if we ask for it. Lord, thank you for the wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. I want you to type it with me just in case you, you haven't noticed that you think you have something you don't. I want you to type with me, Lord, give me wisdom. Give it to me, Lord. I, did, I want wisdom because I don't want to run this race. I don't want to fight this fight without wisdom. He will give you wisdom if you ask for it now. Not only will he give it to you, he will give it to you so generously. Oh, God. Uh, can a Christian lack wisdom? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, you, you, you know, the problem doesn't lie with God. We know that he gives generously to everybody, to all without finding fault. So the problem lies within us. We are not asking for wisdom with an attitude that pleases God. How do you know that, Reverend? According to Proverbs 2 and 6. Proverbs 2 and 6. Uh, for the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Uh, wisdom belongs to God. He created it. If you desire wisdom, we must go to him to get it. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Give, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. I, I don't know about you, but I said, Lord, give me wisdom. I, I've been praying recently. I said, Lord, don't give me anything I can't handle. Hello, somebody. <laughs> you, know, you know, some people ask God for things that they know good and well. They cannot handle it, and they may not even know, but I said, Lord, 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 uh, give me wisdom to be able. You see, let me, you remember I preached the message not long ago when God offered King Solomon anything he wanted. Uh, what did he ask for? He didn't ask for, for riches, money, power. No, Solomon asked God for wisdom. Well, oh, the principal thing. Solomon knew that he would need wisdom to carry out the task of ruling that he had been called to. Lord, the Lord will put something on your plate that is going to take wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. That's right. That's right. That's right. And God is eager to give you the gift of wisdom. You need, all you have to do is ask for it. Ask for it. Now, why do you want wisdom? Because Lord, you've put, you put task on my plate that I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need wisdom on how to discern good from evil. I'm going to need wisdom to discern which one to take because I can make a mess of it. But Lord, if you give me the wisdom, I'm going to follow your divine order. You see, God is a generous God. He's willing to give us generously to everyone who asks. Let us always remember the goodness of our Heavenly Father is to ask for His wisdom. Well, don't ask God for nothing. No, you can ask God for something. Uh, you, you know, you can even ask God questions so that you know His perfect will and live this life for His glory. Can I get a witness in the building? You see, life can be tough enough. Every day we have to fight against sin. We have to fight against our enemy, the devil. We face big giants every day. We face challenges and hardship, but God never told you to compare that problem, to compare that giant, to compare that challenge or hardship against yourself. He said, take that and then compare it against me. And besides me, there's no problem. In order to fight this tough life, we need God's wisdom. I need God's wisdom. You see, I, I, and I just want to tell you this before I leave. There are consequences for neglecting wisdom. Can you type that with me on this evening? There are consequences uh, for uh, uh, of neglecting wisdom. There's consequences when we neglect wisdom. Do not ignore the voice of wisdom. Take heed to the teaching. You see, we would have so much black on black crime if we if we can teach our children and they pay attention uh, to not neglect wisdom. Why? Because if they neglect wisdom. Uh, uh, they they go down a road that's foolish. Uh, you see, uh, uh, apply. we have to apply wisdom in our lives so that we can avoid going through unnecessary pain. I, I, I've done some really foolish things in my life. I thank God for wisdom. I thank God for coming to the, my rescue. I thank God for teaching me better. You see, People who do not know about the consequences of rejecting wisdom will always become a victim to the consequences. Hello, somebody. Let me say it again. People who do not uh, know about the consequences of rejecting wisdom will always become a victim to the consequences. You, you see, uh, do we uh, navigate our lives with God's wisdom? Yes, Lord. I, told, I tell you every week, 
put your ear to God's voice. It's very expensive to hear the voice of God. If God offers you something, uh, anything, would you ask him, would you be like King Solomon and say, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. If you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. There are consequences. You see, when you reject this, God says, I want to give you the gift, the gift of wisdom. We have to ask God for wisdom in two ways. How do I ask God for wisdom? By faith and by single-mindedness. I ask God for wisdom. Lord, give by faith. I'm asking you, Lord, by faith, believing that you can. Well, you say, well, Reverend, uh, yes, Lord. You say, Reverend, what is faith? Faith is conviction and or persuasion uh, plus a corresponding action. That's the works part. You see, you, you're going to need uh, to believe. It's beyond belief. Faith is uh, faith is produced by uh, a conviction, by a persuasion from the inside out. Because your mouth can say anything that don't mean that the cash, the check is going to be cash. You got to be single-minded. Stop going back and forth, back and forth. He says, if you want wisdom, you have to come to me two ways, by faith and single-mindedness. Faith is produced, or well, wisdom is produced by faith and single-mindedness. Faith is essential in approaching God because Hebrews 11, 6, one of my favorite scriptures, and I don't use it often anymore. It says, without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God without faith. Two things we need when we want wisdom. We got to go to God by faith and single-mindedness. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, to please it, who he uh, comes to God must believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Oh God, I love this text without faith. He says, now you, you can have a lot of things, but if you're going to get this wisdom, uh, you're going to need some faith. And, and, and with faith, he says, if you don't come to God in faith, he says, it's impossible to please God. And if you're coming to God, you must believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can somebody say amen? You must believe that God personally cares for you and is able to give you wisdom that you need to endure all trials and tribulation. But watch this and have some joy. You see, remember, faith involved in trust in God's character, trust in God's word uh, and, and timing. You see, when, when it comes to faith, we are looking for something that we can't see uh, with our eyes just yet. You see, uh, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the visible uh, but we, our real battle is with the invisible, the unseen. So that's what faith is. Faith is the invisible and unseen. Uh, he says, but I want you to put the spiritual on that because if you can put your, uh, you can, if God put his super on your natural, he will do supernatural things in your life. Uh, when it comes to faith, we can't see it, but God says, that's where I live. I, it's, it's impossible to please me, to glorify me. It, it, it without having faith. James tells us that godly wisdom comes by asking God in faith. Without faith, we're tossed back and forth. Without faith, we wave around all in all kind of directions. Without faith, we're two-faced and miserable. Without faith, the Bible called, uh, called that person double-minded unstable in all their ways. Uh, this this paints a picture of a person who's drunk and, and staggering from one side to the other. We all have them in our family. Uh, we had one family member every Friday night. Oh God, after he got off from work, uh, he was double-minded. How did, because he would, he would turn to, to, uh, to, to drinking and, and you, you have one in your family. Well, most people do anyway. Have you ever tried to give a drunk person some wisdom while they're drunk? It doesn't make sense. Double-minded. They tell all their business. It, it, it doesn't work well. And God will not impart wisdom to me if you and I are unstable in our ways. He says, I want you to be single-minded. I don't want you to be double-minded. I want you to be clear on what you're asking for and what, you, and what you're asking me to produce. If we are double-minded, we'll get nothing. Oh, no. 
Oh no, if we are double minded, we will be unstable in all of our ways. The wisest decision, thank you Lord, the wisest decision we will ever make in our life is to put our trust in Jesus Christ because he's our savior. He came, sacrificed his life for you and I. When we repent of our sins uh, to receive him, oh God, as Lord and Savior, he will forgive you and our sins, oh God, will be forgiven. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west and he'll give you a brand new life. Put on the trust of Christ because Christ is the source of all wisdom. Oh God, uh, Colossians 2 and 3 says, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Let us come to Jesus, because in him hide all the treasures of wisdom. Oh God, they're hid in Christ. To reject Christ is the most foolish thing a person could ever do. Let's always remember that Jesus is the, the faithfulness, the, the, the faithful, the fullness of our walk on earth, our journey with him. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. To know and love and follow Jesus is to own the treasure of ultimate eternal happiness. My God, my God, may you use God's wisdom for his fame and glory, not yours. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make the Lord, may the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to open the doors of the church now if you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins. Send a man, send a woman, send a boy, send a girl. Know that God is ready to receive you. I give myself back to you now, God. I give myself back to you, God. I can't handle it. I've tried it on my own. But Lord, I give it back to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. If that you inbox me, let me know you want to be saved, that you want to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart uh, that Jesus, that, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, with the heart, man, believe it unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you, Lord, for, for saving those that are here with us on this evening, those that are watching, those that are inboxing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as souls are saved. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving them a new chance, a new opportunity. Let them plan their work and work their plan right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Coming to you, God. Secondly, if, if you're a backslider and you say, well, I want that joy restored. If that's you on today, uh, allow the power of God, the spirit of the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to move God and direct you, knowing that God will restore the joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we touch and agree, believing that God can do anything, absolutely anything, but fail. We thank God for, for thirdly, if you're in, in need of a church home, the doors of the church are open for you, and you feel like you can grow with us and be nurtured at Wesley United Methodist Church. It doesn't matter where you live, around the corner, or around the world. Uh, God is still moving by his spirit. We thank God for this great opportunity. Uh, we want to continue to to now uh, allow you to, to come to God in the way that you know how. Uh, come and walk this journey with us. Now, God, we um, we pray for those that have that have been affected by uh, COVID-19. Uh, we want to thank God for um, the family of Corrine Tate. Oh my, oh my God, COVID-19. Oh God, <sighs> this is um, Sister Barbara Chen's uh, good friend, and we want to continue to lift that family up. We want to continue to pray for baby Mar Asha uh, Diobate. Uh, amen, and Sister. And remember, Sister Betty Johnson in your prayers. Remember, Sister Betty Johnson in your prayers. She's doing well. I went to visit. Amen. Served a communion. She's looking strong, singing the singing the hymns of the past. I thank God for her. I want to continue to remember the family of Sister Betty Hardy Smith, uh, the family of Carolyn Branch, of the passing away of her family member, the family of um, Rhonda Christine Washington, the mother of uh, Dennis Russell. I want to uh, continue to lift up the family of Juanita Brown. Amen. The fam the family of Brandon uh, Brandon K. B.K. Valentine in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God 
for for opening doors. We thank God for for giving us peace in the midst of the storm. We thank God for healing. We thank God for deliverance. We thank God for touching. We thank God for his mighty power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we touch and agree, believing that it's done. Uh, good to see you, woman of God. Ursula Turner is in the house. Good to see you. Look, I, I, I'm praying for your mother. I, I, I know that uh, you guys call me. Let me know what's going on with you. Text me, inbox me. Let me know. Amen. And we will continue to bless God for you, you, and you. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Yes, I see you, Sister Pitcher, uh, praying for the Tate family. Yes, 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 yes. Um, guess what time is it is? It's offering time. Amen. I will always give. Why? Because uh, I'm always have because I'm a, I'm a giver. I'm a always give in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God. Amen. 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 It takes uh, two seconds. Uh, after you set it up, but um, if you're doing easy time, you can text your your amount to 225-500-2023 or um, in two minutes to set up, two or three seconds after, and you are good to go. Your gift was received. Amen. Or you can mail your check, 540 Wesley United Methodist Church, 544 Government Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. Or you can do cash app, dollar sign, Wesley, UMCBR. Oh, God, you can also give on our website, www.wesleybr.org. I thank God for those. For You know, I really thank God for giving. Oh, God. I don't know if you feel like I do, but it's good to be in a position to give than to have to be in a position that we have to receive. So I'm grateful to God for all that he does for us, in us, and through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, those that have not uh, made your commitments yet or have pledged, to the burning of the mortgage. I want you to help us. 77,000 to go. Uh, you know, this is not a hard assignment for a multitude of people. If you haven't uh, uh, given yet, I want you to, um, if you're giving, however you're giving, uh, put in a memo, burn the mortgage. I want I want to pay this thing off by June. If, if all possible, I'm praying to God saying, Lord, bless us that we may be able to move forward because we have so many other things to do beyond paying off our mortgage. We uh, After we pay off the mortgage, we're going straight into a, a new day. We're going to build some bathrooms at the church. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for those that the givers. We thank you, God, for providing for us to be able to give back to you for the building of your kingdom. We bind every hindering spirit, God, that come against our finances. We loose our blessings now, God, from up on high. Bless us, oh God, some 30, 60, 100 fold blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Yes, 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 yes. We're godly proud of our youth. Look, our youth will be participating every Sunday. Amen. Uh, we, we do our best to have them there every week so that you can see their face in the place. Amen. Go to the website, uh, Wesley uh, BR, uh, www.wesleybr to sign up for church services. Uh, let the church say amen. I see you in the house, Sister Doris Dickerson. We're praying for you, woman of God. Good to see you the other week. Uh, peace and blessings to you. Thyrosinus Lewis is in the building. Bless you, woman of God. Barbara Salas Chin, we know that we're praying for you. Janice Pitcher, amen, amen, amen. Ursula Turner, how's your mother? Call me, let me know. Text me, inbox me. Uh, yes, Cheryl Ricard, my friend. Good to see you, woman of God. Ali, our sweet wine is in the building. Uh, Alvin Benoit, good evening, sir. Amen. Lily Ennis, good to see you. Amen. Mary Samuels, always three times, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Good to see you, woman of God. Peace and blessings to you. Uh, Jolene Taylor Benoit is in the building. Good to see you, woman of God. Lily Ennis Robinson, amen, amen to you and your family. Look, God is doing a magnificent thing. I just want to be in, in the line when God, whatever you're doing, Lord, in this season, don't do it without me. If you're blessing, Cam, in the building, if you're blessing, don't bless without me. If you're healing, God, don't heal without me. Include me in the number. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. God has spoken. Let the church, the whole church, say amen. I'll see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time. Peace and blessings.